everyone, welcome back to So So Vintage. I hope you guys are really excited about the return. I'm really happy to be back with it and to be back sewing again. And we are starting things off with a uh, project I've been loving doing and that is making some aprons. So we are going to be making uh, this uh, B apron right over here, this one here, out of the More Retro Aprons book by Cindy Taylor Oates. I will try to place a link in the description to where you can uh, get this great book. One of the reasons why I wanted to choose this is aprons are really really fun great easy projects and these aprons are absolutely lovely but as a beginning sewer the instructions can be a little intimidating because it doesn't come with your typical patterns what it comes with are your pattern pieces on regular paper but it says not to cut out the paper and one of the reasons is because you have more patterns on the back side so it wants you to trace some of the patterns and you have to create some of the patterns yourself so I think it's a really fun project for beginning sewers because of its e easy level and also sewers who want to start experimenting with making their own pieces it kind of gives you I mean they're really simple pieces to make but still you're making your own pattern pieces the other reason why I like this project is because it gave me the ability to modify some of the patterns. I didn't like the options it gave for the ties. It gave an option where you tied it behind your head or behind your waist, or the straps were all interconnected and it went over your back and through loops on your waist and you brought it around. And I just wanted that good old fashioned apron that you slipped over your head and you tied about your back, behind your back or in front. So I modified the uh, pattern to do that. So I'll talk through the modifications as we go. So fabrics, this is where it gets insanely fun because you get to choose a couple different fabrics. For this, this is for a really good friend of mine and she loves uh, De Los Muertos and I'm probably pronouncing it horrible so I'm sorry. Uh, Day of the Dead stuff. So I found this great Day of the Dead fabric um, from Joanne and it's very colorful and very very fun. This is the main body of the apron. How much of this do you need? Well it depends. These aprons are lined so that the front and back both have color which I think is another fabulous perk of this apron but you have to decide do you want both sides of your apron to be exactly the same or do you want the front side to be the pattern and the back side to be maybe a solid color. If you want the lining and the body to be exactly the same, so all in one fabric, you are going to need one and a half yards. If you want to change it where the body is different, uh, different fabric than the back, you will need three-fourths of a yard of each of your chosen fabrics. I hope that makes sense. Oh, but we're not done yet. No, no, no. What fabric do you want to choose for the pocket in front and for the ruffle at the bottom of the skirt? I have chosen to use this great um, white with these uh, polka dots bubbles on them. I don't know why. I just thought it was such a fun fabric. So I actually bought a lot of this fabric to use for a lot of the different aprons. But if you're just making one apron, you're just going to want to get about, you're going to want to get three eighths of a yard for your ruffle and pocket still not done. Then you want your accent fabric. Your accent fabric is going to be the trim on your pocket and above your ruffle. I've chosen this great white with black polka dots in the background. I thought it was a great transition between the two, but this is, you can be as fun as you want. For this, you want three-fourths of a yard. So those are the fabrics that you're going to want to get. You can really, really shop around and find fabrics that really work within your budget. So the next thing you're going to want to do with your fabric is you're going to want to wash it and iron it. Now you're going to need your pattern pieces. Now I'm going to, in the description, I am going to write down all the pattern pieces that are associated with this apron because like I said, the directions, while really good, they are towards geared more towards an experienced sewer who kind of just gets it. I had to actually make notes to figure out exactly what I needed. So I'm going to place all of that in the description below. Now a lot of these pattern pieces we're going to be making ourselves, but a couple of them are actually supplied in the book itself. So 
So let me show you how you take this apron pattern piece and actually get it into a pattern piece that you can use. If you can get your hands on some actual pattern paper, that's great. It comes in reams, you can get them to the size that you need. My stores locally didn't have them and I don't want to deal with ordering it on the web. So what I got instead was this tracing paper. This you can find at any of your arts and crafts stores. It is 19 inches by 24 inches. That's 48.3 centimeters by 61 centimeters. This is normally big enough for anything that we need. And I'm going to lay it over our apron. Whoopsie daisy. You can see that this piece isn't actually big enough for our apron. Just grab yourself another piece of tracing paper. So all you're going to do with your tracing paper is you are going to overlap it. I overlap it maybe an inch, inch and a half an inch, something like that. Then just take your transparent tape and tape down the edge. Now I do tape it all the way across just to make sure that it stays nice and stable. And then as well, I'm gonna flip over the tracing paper and tape the back side as well. All right, so now all you have to do is place your tracing paper right on top of your apron pattern piece. You will notice that for this apron, it has extra large, large, uh, medium, and small. So you're gonna determine the size that you wanna make and you're gonna follow those lines. So essentially what I do is I take a Sharpie, lay my ruler, make sure my ruler's nice and lined up, and then just trace the line. It is as easy as that, my friends. Now the one thing you wanna do is you don't want your paper to move about as you're tracing the apron, because otherwise it'll get a little messed up. I suggest using a little bit of masking tape because it's easier to remove. Taping down your tracing paper. Now for the curves in the paper, you can invest in like a curved ruler to kind of help you around those curves. But honestly, you know, just keep your hand on it and trace it out by hand and you'll continue to do that all the way around. I also transfer any markings that are on the um, pattern such as this gets placed on the fold and also there are dart markings on here as well. Once you have that all done, remove the pa uh, pattern paper. Use either your rotary cutter and just cut right along those lines or go ahead and use your non-fabric scissors and just cut out around your line. It's as easy as that. So you will end up with a pattern piece that looks like this for your apron. And this is both for the body and the lining. The other item that will come from the same technique is the ruffle guide and that again you'll want to mark any tracing. So those are the two pattern pieces that they give you. You have to make everything else. So that is it for part one of making retro aprons. I hope you guys are really enjoying the return of So So Vintage. And don't worry, we're going to be getting back into dressmaking as well. But, you know, we got to shake it up, do something different here. Um, but next week, we're going to get into actually making your own pattern pieces. So you can look forward to that. The easiest way to let me know you like the return of So So Vintage is to click the big thumb, the big like button, let me know. Or in the comment section below, go ahead and let me know uh, how you're liking the return and have you guys made an apron before? If you are new to a vintage vanity, you just need to click that big yellow subscribe button. That's going to let you know when new videos are posted here on the channel. And uh, I hope to see you again and I will see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.